Merrill Memo with Matthew Dickerson from Dubbo Regional Council. Welcome to the Merrill Memo podcast. While the normal host, Mark Barnes, is away over the Christmas break, I've taken the opportunity to interview the councillors individually about their first year with the new council. 23rd of December 2021 was the day that the new council was sworn in and inducted and the Councillor interviews were conducted within a few days either side of the one-year anniversary of that date. The process was straightforward. I invited all of the other nine councillors to be a guest on the Merrill Memo podcast. I then created ten questions that explored some information about each councillor and about their first year in the role. Feedback was provided by the councillors on those questions and, after some modifications, all guests were then asked those identical questions. Each councillor sat down with me in my makeshift studio at home and asked them each of the 10 questions, plus a bonus anything else question. I am publishing two of those interviews each week in reverse alphabetical order, and the Mail Memo podcast will then resume as normal when Mark Barnes returns from holidays. I hope you enjoy the insight into the minds of our councillors. This week we have Matt Wright and Pam Wells. Today I'm with Councillor Matt Wright. Matt was elected in the West Ward at the December 2020 elections and a first time councillor. So, Matt, welcome along. Thanks, Matt. Good to be here. Yeah, great. So, I've got 10 questions for you and then a, a general commentary question. So, question one. What motivated you to stand for council elections in December 2021? Yeah, look, it, uh, it seems like a lifetime ago now, doesn't it? You know, we're just over 12 months and we've been into the job. And um, and I suppose it probably goes back to the previous election, actually, uh, which was uh, coming up four or five years ago, I suppose, now, when um, I uh, had a couple of people tap me on the shoulder and ask me uh, if I was interested in running at the time. And I, uh, at the time, it probably wasn't quite the right time for me. And I armed an art and sat in the fence for quite a while. And just prior to the election, uh, I had a gentleman, he, he come up to me and uh, we had the conversation and he said, look, it's obviously your decision, but I'll leave you with this. Bad things happen when good people don't step in and do something about it. And it resonated with me for a long, long time. And obviously we've seen, you know, different things happen um, you know, over the last couple of years with council and uh, and I guess that sat with me. So, um, uh, look, I decided to put my hand up this year for, for that reason. Um, I had a bit of experience with the Dallow Chamber, of course, uh, for four or five years during that period. And... Um, uh, as president and, and was quite, uh, I think, in touch with the bit local business community and a pretty good understanding of what they may have needed um, as part of their requirements to, to run a business in Dubbo and what they might expect in the city. So I thought, well, maybe I could take that bit of experience into a council type role as well. And, and look, ultimately, I'm a citizen of the city. I, I just want, to, I'd love to see the city continue to prosper and grow. And I thought, well, if I can contribute towards that, then uh, maybe now's my time. So uh, so here I am. Ah, good. So they're very wise words that someone said to you. <laughs> they were very wise words and they certainly resonated for a long period of time. Yeah, good. How would you describe your most enjoyable aspect of being a counsellor? Look, it's, there's a lot of things, but look, I suppose it's probably enjoyable and challenging at the same time. And, and, and I guess what I'm referring to there is just uh, uh, around the many aspects of council. There's, there's so much to learn, and I guess that whole learning experience over the first 12 months has been um, has been challenging, but also really enjoyable at the same time. And uh, I, I suppose the other part to that is I've really enjoyed working with the staff. Uh, I know we, we don't have direct communication with a lot of the, the staff on that operational and day-to-day level, but certainly you know the CEO, the governance team, the directors who, who we have a bit of uh, one-on-one communication with, um, I've really enjoyed working with them as as well, so the passion that they bring uh, to the role and their experience is really uh, is really great from a councillor, from a new councillor's perspective. So, yeah, you know, I found the, the working with the people side of things to be probably uh, some of the most enjoyable fa- uh, facets. What are council's greatest achievements this year? <laughs> greatest achievements in uh, in twelve months. Look, I think uh, probably getting through the first 12 months uh, all alive and with it is, is probably one. But uh, uh, look, I think there's a couple of things there. Um, I think, that, look, the public have obviously had a, a part to play in this, but uh, the, the greatest achievement, firstly, forming a, a group of councillors who uh, are both um, uh, very respectful for each other's opinions uh, and bring all bring something very different to the table. So I think that's, that's a great achievement from a council perspective. 
Um, uh, look, I think um, uh, one of the, the, the more contentious topics, I suppose, has been that the Regan Park conversation. Uh, and, and certainly, I think this council to bring that to the fore and, and commence recommence that master planning process and involve the community quite heavily in it. Um, I think that's uh, that, that certainly council need to be patted on the back for that. Uh, I know it's been running on for a very, very long time now. Uh, and uh, and to bring it to the fore, get community involved and hopefully come up with a great outcome for the public uh, and the community in 2023. Uh, I'm really looking forward to see how that, seeing how that plays out. But um, again, encourage the community to get behind that whilst it's open at the moment. And that's an really interesting point you bring up because sometimes there are hard things you've got to deal with at council, but it doesn't mean you run away with from them. And there might be issues that might be contentious or they might be controversial. But again, you don't want to run away from it. You want to say, well, we've got to deal with this. Let's deal with it. And you take the good, bad and the indifference as you go through that process. Yeah, and many of the, the decisions we make as, as councillors aren't our decision. They're the decisions of the community who, who, who we're representing here. So, um, and, and you look, there are some tough decisions. And like with many decisions we make as councillors, very quickly learning that there's going to be winners and losers and, and, and people who are indifferent to either. So, uh, so certainly that's been a bit of a, a juggling act. How do you think that council could have done better this year? Yeah, look, I think in the first year, um, look, getting our head around so many different aspects of, of, of council and its assets and its processes, um, I, I think that's a, that's been an initial challenge. Um, uh, I'm not sure if we could have done that any better. There's a lot of cramming, as you know, with respect to that early education piece to all councillors. Um, look, personally, myself as a councillor, um, I th- like to think in 2023, I'd utilise uh, the, the experience of those the directors and the CEO and call upon them a little bit more frequently. Uh, I think I could have done that better myself in 2022. Um, and, and I guess treading a fine line between how far can I push with regards to uh, seeking a bit of extra information or seeking some guidance from uh, from those senior staff who we can actually liaise with. So um, I think personally, that's one thing I think I could have done better. Um, and, uh, and I'll learn from that and, uh, and, and, and take up the opportunity to seek that advice in 2023. And that's a really good point too, that you look at those things that you could have done better and then take that information because a lot of this first year was really about learning, especially for new councillors, about learning all the processes, what you can do, what you're not meant to do, and then next year take that and really take advantage of all of that. Mm, and I think we now we've got that, I, I suppose, whole educational piece behind us to a point. I know we've got some ongoing type uh, 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 training, which is just part of the role, but certainly to have that part, that, that's that's not a distraction for us anymore. We've pocketed that. We've learnt uh, from all those facets uh, early in the piece, and uh, we can now start 2023 um, without I suppose, losing that first couple of months of the year on, uh, on concentrating on training. What was your toughest individual decision this year as a councillor? Gee, yeah, there was a there was a few tough ones, and if we talk council decisions, um, look, a couple come to mind, I, I suppose, and one, one of them was a, the Taco Bell sign, I, I guess that, uh, that that council decided to uh, to vote vote against, and, and and look from a public's perspective, that that looked like a pretty simple one that maybe should have got over the line, but uh, there's reasons it didn't. But uh, I, I think that personally, the very tough, most toughest one was way back early in the piece. Uh, there was a a, 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 um, a DA came before council for a boarding house in North Dubbo. Uh, it was one of the first major pieces of decision or pieces of uh, items, I guess, that we had to make a decision on. And um, I found that very, very challenging to be looking at it from both aspects because only a couple of months before I was just a just a community citizen. And now I'm a councillor making these decisions on behalf of the community and on behalf of council. So that was a really tough one to make straight up. And, and, and of course, uh, a, a lot of other councillors did as well because we deferred that decision uh, until we all did a little bit more homework on it. And obviously we came back and made a decision uh, another meeting or so later. So personally, I found that was a, a really tough one to make. And uh, there's probably be, there'll be a lot more tough ones to make during the rest of this term. And that was one where you could just see the point of view from the residents that live nearby and they had a valid point and you think, yes, we've definitely got to go that way. But then you look at it from a planning perspective, from the laws associated with that and they comply with all those laws and you think, well, we can't do anything else but go that way. So it was one of those really tough ones where you could absolutely see both points of view and we're sitting there going, we've got to make a call one way or the other. Yeah, and and, and, and um, uh, both those things you mentioned, and and uh, as well as the fact that at the point, uh, in the middle of a housing crisis, definitely needed additional um, uh, alternative means of accommodation. And, and I guess that was one of those things the 
got me over the line that, uh, okay, uh, I can see pros and cons of both sides, but we really need to help address this housing crisis that the city um, is going through and will continue to go through if we don't make those sorts of decisions. What have been your challenges or frustrations as a councillor in the last year? Frustrations. Um, look, coming from private enterprise, uh, I've had the business, my business now for, for nearly 20 years. Um, we're in a small business and, uh, and, and small businesses are very nimble. You know, you can make, make a decision on a Monday and implement it on a Tuesday and, uh, and, and make the changes and away we go. Um, we're obviously dealing with a very, very different business now in council where, uh, whereby, uh, we have so many different stakeholders and so many, um, levels of legislation and requirements that are involved. And, um, certainly we might be able to make a decision in January, but by the time we go through the process, so whether it be you know through governance or or, or community consultation or um, uh, you know uh, public um, uh, making it available public to, to look at and make comment on all that sort of process, we might make the decision in January, but ultimately by the time we actually get to nailing it, it might be six or even twelve months later. So the frustration of process, I guess, is is one thing I found difficult. I'm getting my head around it, and and certainly educating the public on that is one thing because we talked about something six months ago. Actually, even some decisions we've made as this council were uh, decisions. That uh, uh, that have, were made from the previous council that we've now seen come across our desk. So, um, so I guess that's time frame. That's that's probably my biggest frustration. I'm learning to live with that. <laughs> that is a tough one. I'm the same. When I first started on council back in 2004, I was the same. It was why can't we just do this? It's obvious this is the answer. But the difference, and I think you've touched on it there, is in council I'm dealing with someone else's money. I'm dealing with the community's money, and if I get it wrong, then it hurts the community. Whereas in my business, if I get it wrong, then it's my back pocket, or I might have to answer to my wife or my family, but you're personally responsible for this. Now, you really are dealing with community's money. And you also, the, the second part of it, you need to take the community along for the ride. You might see something because you've got all these briefings and you've got all this extra information. You say, well, there's the obvious decision. Let's go and do it tomorrow. But the community isn't aware of all that extra information, so you've got to make sure they're informed along the way as well. Mm, and it's funny you say that because uh, uh, some of the decisions that ca- the council has made are uh, often in uh, confidential council, or whatever it might be, and we've made decisions which, as councillors, and, and even based on information we've received from the public, we've made those decisions um, which, what we believe, are in the best interest of the public. Obviously, those decisions then are rolled out towards the community, and, and there can be some angst then as to why certain decisions were made. And I guess I find it frustrating that... There's a lot more information to it. Uh, if it's confidential, we can't reveal a lot of that information. So I find that frustrating. Um, I suppose one of the other frustrations I've found as well is, um, uh, again, probably more of a, an education piece between council and, and community um, in understanding where our, our levels of jurisdiction are. Um, and, and again, I, I didn't know a lot of this uh, 12 months ago, and I suppose a good example would be people who suggest to me how, how poor the, the Dubbo to Wellington Road is at the moment. I said, look, it is really poor, but look, unfortunately, it's, it's not our asset. It, it belongs to the state and it's their responsibility to maintain that. So to try and educate people on where our lines are within council and, and our levels of power, um, certainly, uh, you know, we've talked a lot of, uh, within council, a group ourselves regarding, you know, 24-hour policing in Wellington. And and, and, and again, we might not have the decision uh, to be able to implement that ourselves, but we certainly we can uh, we can uh, uh, lobby and push and prod uh, to, to get that decision in our favour. But uh, understanding where our lines of control are and, and educating the public on that, I've probably found it a bit frustrating. But like I said, I was there 12 months ago and I've learned a lot in 12 months knowing where our line in the sand is. So I guess conveying that to the community is another. What was the most surprising or unexpected aspect you found about council this year? Surprising, and I, well, I've used this analogy with a lot of people I've, I've d- discussed this with, and and I, I've used this onion analogy, um, and I've described council as a bit of an onion, not because of the sour taste or the smell, maybe, but uh, some might argue otherwise. But look, that whole layer thing, you know, that uh, I see council as this big onion, and, and every time I turn around, I'm peeling another layer back, and there's just so many layers to this business, um, and, and understanding that how many different assets and all the levels of responsibility council has. So, um, and, and you know, it might be an example of a, a particular building and uh and i go oh actually is that is that ours that, that's councils we own that and, and uh and so again going, oh, there's another layer of the onion i didn't know that was ours so um so certainly peeling back the onion and understanding how many different facets are out of council has really surprised me um and i suppose that's one of the other challenges juggling all those those different aspects of it as well but uh yeah that's probably my biggest surprise sounds like you're channeling shrek there talking about <laughs> onions and layers <laughs> that's, that's right <laughs> 
How would you describe the public perception of council? Yeah, I've had a conversation with a, a number of people in the community about this, and uh, and, and I think uh, overall, I think it's been relatively positive. I think um, people have seen the, this group of ten councillors as a bit of a breath of fresh air, I guess. Um, you know, obviously there's history there in, in council over the past few years, and and a little bit of volatility, which um, a number of people have commented to me. They were probably sick of seeing council on the front page of the paper for maybe all the wrong reasons instead of some of the good reasons. And there were some good good facets of, of things that occurred, and unfortunately they were drowned out by the noise of m- maybe. Uh, maybe the noise of, um, of of the media looking for something a little bit more out, outrageous, but nevertheless, um, uh, I think the uh, overall the, the uh, community see uh, this council has been relatively positive, moving forward in a in a good direction. Um, look, and I encourage people if they uh, uh, if they think otherwise to yeah, to reach out and, uh, and and let us know if they think we should be doing things a little bit differently or going in a different direction. But yeah, I feel pretty positive about where we're heading, and the, and the community um, are telling me the same thing. And the councillors all seem to be very open to receiving emails from the public, receiving phone calls from the public. And so exactly as you said, I'd encourage people the same. If you like the direction it's going or you don't like the direction it's going, communicate with the councillors. The councillors are very good at doing that and being able to respond to those. So I think councils actually enjoy those interactions. Yeah, and, and I must say, I think the whole group is pretty accessible, you know, whether it is phone, email, or um, again, utilising those Saturday mornings down at the Rotunda, either here or in Wellington, to have those conversations. It's You choose how you'd like to, to interact with councillors. If you'd like to bring up a certain topic or a certain issue, then uh, uh, like you say, you don't have to wait till the first uh, till, till a Saturday or whatever it might be on uh, the Rotunda. You, you can certainly get hold of us before that, but whatever you might be comfortable with as a community member, um, that the, the uh, uh, lines of communication are open. What would you like to see council achieve in 2023? Yeah, look, that's a tough one, isn't it? And, and look, budget-wise, I guess, you know, we're in a bit of a hole. Uh, you know, the figures suggest that uh, the council has been running at a loss over the last couple of years. And um, and uh, one of the key focuses of this council, especially amongst a number of us councillors, was uh, that we'd like to see us uh, turn that around. And, and, and look, there's been a number of reasons for council running in the red over the last couple of years. Obviously, COVID challenges have been, been a big one. And, and, and this council, fingers crossed, we're not going to face that uh, going forward. But, um, but certainly 2023, that focus on um, where we can save some money, but continue to provide community with the level of service that they would expect for the money that they pay, um, that'll be our challenge going forward. So I think that 2023 budget, this will be our first budget as councillors, which uh, will be passed in, in a bit over six months' time. So um, so I think uh, that that's a facet of the business which I'd like to try and focus on. And, and certainly we're, we're running through that now with a lot of these service reviews on, you know, for example, uh, you know, the sale yards is a good example, uh, you know, having those service reviews in place and focusing on the financial viability of the council. So that's uh, that's I think where we I'd like to put a bit of energy in uh, into 2023. What does the Dubbo region look like in 2050? 2050. I'm trying to think even how old I'll be in 2050. I'm not sure if I'll be around to even see Dubbo in 2050. Uh, 39, Matthew, you'll be, won't 30, you? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Again, <laughs> again. Um, look, I, I think uh, it'll continue to head in that direction that we are. Uh, Dubbo now versus Dubbo 10 and 20 years ago, it's a very, very different place. So uh, um, I think we'll continue to see that um, level of growth in um, you know that, that sort of um, cultural diverse area of the city. So that multicultural background of the city will look very, very different again. So it will be a quite a culturally diverse region. Um, the city itself will obviously continue to grow and it becomes that real service point. And I'd love to see uh, Dubbo itself and, and the LGA being, um, uh, I suppose, a, a, a laid back regional lifestyle that offers all the, uh, the, 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 the mod cons of a metropolitan area. And certainly we probably do that in a lot of places now, but we will be a much bigger city. Um, I'd like to think I'm still around and, uh, and, and enjoying a, a laid back regional location. You, maybe we might not have our 10 minute city anymore in, in 20 odd years time or 30 years time we're such a big place but uh, um, I, I think the yeah if anything that growth of the the multicultural aspect of our city uh, is is where things will look very very different I think in 30 years time so we'll be sitting there talking to your grandkids saying 
Well, back when I was on council, <laughs> we would have done it this way. <laughs> that, that's right. That's right. Well, so this, this is where uh, the, the multicultural aspect of our city started. Uh, and you can thank Shibley for putting his hand up in front of council and representing that facet of the community. So. <laughs> So this is now open mic. Any other general comments? No, I, I, I don't think so, Matt. You know, I, I, um, it's, it's been a – look, I've really enjoyed the first 12 months in, in, the, in the seat. Um, I've enjoyed the company of the, the councillors around us, and I've said to a lot of people before, it's been a, a really diverse group of councillors, you know, with a, a good female, male representation, a couple of uh, Indigenous um, uh, folk on there as well. Um, we've also got, uh, you know, uh, Shibley with his multicultural background bringing that facet of council in. Uh, we've got, you know, eight new faces and, and two with a bit of experience. Like, it, it really is. A diverse group, n- number of different businesses and industries represented as well. So uh, I think that that's been really important, and I've learned a lot. Um, you know, hanging around the, the other nine uh, councillors that are within the group. So uh, um, no, I guess I'm pretty excited about how how we'll look in 2023 and 2024. Obviously, we'll have a we'll have a mayoral election. I guess uh, in is that a bit over 12 months time? It's not that far away, I suppose. So yeah, nine months until yeah, <laughs> not that anybody's counting. So <laughs> um, so th- so so that'll come around as well. And uh, I guess depending on the outcome of that, we may have a new mayor as well at that point in time and things may look a bit different again so um no look uh well, i don't have too many more comments so yeah uh, uh, i'll look forward to hearing uh what the other nine councillors or eight councillors i suppose have got to say when i sit down and listen to their podcast as well yeah, right. anyway look it's been a pleasure working with you this year and i think you're right the councillors seem to have gelled very well together and it's i've really enjoyed the experience this year and enjoy working with you so thanks for your efforts this year and i'm sure the community appreciates your efforts and i look forward to working with you again through 2023 and likewise matt thanks very much I'm sitting here today with Councillor Pam Wells. Pam was elected in the West Ward in December 2021 and a first-time councillor. So, Pam, thanks for coming along. Thanks for the invitation. So we've got 10 questions plus a, a general comments area. So the question one I've got for you is, what motivated you to stand for council elections in December 2021? Mm, interesting question. Thanks, Matt. Um, look, I was motivated initially by um, a previous uh, councillor, the previous mayor, um, Stephen Lawrence, who I had a lot to do with on the alcohol and other drugs um, uh, campaign. Um, and the, the, the second piece of my motivation was to bring a uh, cultural lens to the way that council engages with its um, Aboriginal community. And also its its workforce. Yeah, sounds good. And, and again, that whole process about how people arrange or arrive at that decision, there's so many steps that can be taken, can't they, before you get to that point where you say, I'm now going to make the decision to do it. So it's not just one event usually. Absolutely. It's uh, the first question posed to me of whether when I was interested, if I was interested, and then I um, had to think about it. And I actually at times went, no, I'm not going to do that. I don't think um, uh, I'm the right person. I don't think I'll bring the right value. I don't know whether, you know, it's something I should do. So I did, I did ask myself lots and lots of questions of, is it something I should do? Um, and then I made the decision to, you know, to go for it. Good. I think the community appreciates that you did. Thank you. How would you describe your most enjoyable aspect of being a councillor? Well, that, that's an easy one. I would say that uh, the networking between um, all the councillors has been really um, interesting and fun for me. Um, learning uh, the, the learning piece, I think, is has been. Um, I would say the most interesting thing, uh, learning about what council does. I've, I'm still on a very steep learning curve. Uh, and uh, meeting all of the new uh, council staff is is also, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a very much family-orientated person and I feel like they're my council family. Yeah, <laughs> What are council's greatest achievements this year? Oh, so that's really that's a really hard question um, because things that we've achieved this year 
aren't necessarily the outcome of what we've done. So I think council uh, has had many, many uh, instances of great achievements where there's been funding announcements. But for us to probably raise a flag and say we were fortunate to have an opportunity to influence that and um, to me that's things like... um, the changes that we're making to 26th of January 2023 uh, and that's the great conversation we've had through the councillors around having a cultural lens and thinking really deeply about how we're going to participate on that day. So for me that's one of the greatest achievements. So you are probably aware already that your question that you mentioned that you'd been asked at the December council meeting was what gave me the idea to write my mayoral memo number 50, which was really around someone asking you, what have you done this year? And I suppose the biggest challenge for that is that you might have been in council for five minutes, but decisions you make in that five minutes might have an impact in two years' time or three years' time. So to point directly to things that you might have achieved immediately is a pretty tough ask, although Mm. I, I still think, and I wrote that column based on just some of the things that we have achieved this year. So mm. I, I think someone would be very unfair in you to say, Pam, you haven't done much this year. What have you done? Tell mm. me all the things you've done because I think we still have achieved a fair bit throughout the year. I, I agree. I think that it, it's a hard question to ask on the spot and, and there are plenty of achievements that we've had. The opportunity to influence, I think, is, is our greatest greatest achievement in terms of the thinking going forward. <laughs> How do you think that council could have done better this year? Another, it's another tough question, isn't it? Um, I think uh, there's, there's many areas we can always uh, think about doing better. But one of the things that we could probably look at as a council, and I think we do this in, in the governance area, is always look at continuous improvement and things that um, that we that we do. We should always do some reflection afterwards. What did we do? What did we achieve? How could we have done it differently? And what could we have done to make it you know, make things better? Um, so it's there's not one thing I could put my finger on to say what exactly could we have done differently. Um, but I think that we should be thinking around how we're, we're reassessing and, and reflecting on things that we do do and always ask that question. And it's a, it is a tough question because there was a large chunk of the year spent with induction and learning and really getting all of us up to speed with the Regional Council. There's a, it's a big beast to get your head wrapped around. Mm. So we spent a lot of time doing that. And they, there weren't a lot of decisions being made during that time. It was really about learning. So mm. to look back and say what we could have done better, it is a tough question. It's a very, very tough question. I think if I could just add, um, for people in the future who choose to um, pursue, uh, uh, you know, to go on council, they should do a little bit more research because it's very different to what we learnt um, prior to coming on. <laughs> What was your toughest individual decision this year as a councillor? Look, there's been a couple, but I'll I'll probably talk to one, and that would have been my choice to vote against the the boarding house in Maclay Street. And it wasn't tough in terms of the decision I made to vote against it, but it was tough to be the lone person to vote against it and my colleagues all voted for it. Whilst it was tough, I was still felt we had really respectful conversations. But, it, you know, it is, a, it is difficult when you're voting on something and you're the only person. And that was a tough decision for a whole range of things, especially a new council thrown in at the deep end, making a decision where I think all councillors could see both points of view. They were both valid. The residents around there were certainly potentially impacted. We had planning laws that were going to be met. We had affordable housing issues. So there are a whole range of points of view, and they're all valid. You want to be able to say yes to all of them, Mm -hmm. but unfortunately, as councillors, we do. We have to put our hand up one way or the other, don't we? So that was a tough one. Absolutely. What have been your challenges or frustrations as a councillor in the last year? Um, look, I think it's pretty evident that the challenges are the, I think that the, the top of the agenda has been a lot of the conversation around uh, Regan Park. I think that's, um, 
that's been in the media, it's been on social media, it's been on you know everybody's uh, mind, and um, I, it, I get frustrated because I wonder whether we're actually sending through the right messages. Um, but look, I think we're getting there. It has it is tough to feel like that you're repeating yourself, um, but you know you have to expect to have tough discussions when you're in such a such a role. Mm. And it has been interesting how it's developed. Now we've got that master plan out on Mm. public display and I certainly would encourage people to have a look at that master plan and put their comments in. But it is interesting to see how it has developed and what we've ended up with Mm. in terms of the draft master plan now with all the the conspiracies and various theories that we're throwing around. I think that master plan that we've got, the draft master plan, shows that we were going down a path that was always going to be the same path that we went down. Mm. Absolutely. What was the most surprising or unexpected aspect you found about council this year? Uh, I was really surprised at its size, financial size. I didn't realise it was such a big financial um, beast. How would you describe the public perception of council? One word. I would say positive. Yeah, good. And obviously you talk to lots of people in lots of different aspects of life and people are obviously very keen to give you an opinion, probably even more so than before you were a counsellor. Mm. So you get a pretty good snapshot, don't you, of what people think? Yeah, I, I do. I think that whilst I have a lot of people um, just chat to me normally about certain, you know, what what's happening uh, in council, there's always a really respectful, positive conversation. Yeah, good. What would you like to see council achieve in 2023? 2023, I'd like to see council um, influence the state government and federal government in the alcohol and other drugs uh, rehabilitation centre. Now, I know that there's a lot of planning underway, but this delay is very problematic and hopefully council can... Um, knock on the door a little bit harder. And with a state election obviously coming up, it might be a timely time to do that, but it'd be nice to see some announcement with some sort of time frames, wouldn't it? Oh, absolutely. Mm. What does the Dubbo region look like in 2050? Mm. I probably won't be here, but um, one would hope that it is continues to grow like it's growing now. With its, you know, it's got a very strong multicultural aspect to it, um, and the with the new uh, Wiradjuri Tourism Centre, I hope to see uh, a lot of um, strength, cultural strength, come out of Dubbo, where we can shine a light on the the strength of the culture that's already here that people don't seem to think is here. Um, so I think I think there's only good things to to come in in the years ahead. So open mic time. Any other general comments? Here's your chance to stand on your soapbox and talk about whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> my soapbox. I've got plenty of those. Look, my heart leads um, mostly to things in the in this region for families, but I also am very connected to the work that I do um, at, in my work life, working in um, child protection and counselling and homelessness sectors. Those things. Um, will always be at front of mind for me, um, which they are for many other people. So I'm hoping to look, continue to focus on those. Um, but I, I also um, hope that, you know, we can continue to have a great bunch of um, councillors that uh, has the respect to the community and that we, you know, we, we can make things move. So it, it, they're, they're my hopes for, for going forward. Yeah, good. Well, I must admit, I've really enjoyed working with you this year, and I like the cultural lens you bring to the council. I like the family lens you bring, and I like the fact that you always do focus on those respectful conversations, and we can have disagreements and 
not agree on everything going forward as a councillor group, but I know that you are always very focused on making sure that we all maintain that respect amongst us all. So that is fantastic. So thank you for your efforts this year. I'm sure the community appreciates everything that you've done so far this year, and I really look forward to working with you next year. Oh, thank you, Matthew. I look forward to working with you and the rest of the, the councillors and the, and the staff. Um, it's an exciting opportunity. I hope you enjoyed gaining further insight into the minds of our councillors related to activities in 2022 with a view to the future as well. We have a diverse group of councillors and we're working very well together as a team. Continue to provide feedback by sending emails to mayor at dabo.com and please follow or subscribe to this podcast and leave a review. Until next week, Meryl Memo with Matthew Dickerson from Dubbo Regional Council.